Hey everybody, it's your girl Purple, the Jump Sea Jet Setter. Hey y'all, it's your girl Purple. So yes, I'm sitting in my car because right now this is the quietest place I can find to do this video. My house is doing a bunch of things right now. But, so this video I'm going to talk about nine revving because I've done that a couple of times now. Um, I'm going to talk about the third week of training and I'm going to talk about IOE because I got my IOE. <laughs> All right, first things first, third week of training. Um, for my airline, most of our training was virtual. First two weeks was almost all virtual. We went, we only went into the hangar to take exams and do comp checks and things like that. Other than that, we were virtual. Week three is a lot more days in the hangar. Um, we do a lot more hands-on stuff. We start working with the doors of each aircraft, opening and closing them, um, emergency exits. We do uh, all of those things. Um, we still have virtual classes, but we have more hands-on on the third week. And a lot of people say Hell Week is the third week. I think Hell Week is the fourth week, but we'll get to that in our in my next video. So that's training for the third week. Um, a lot more hangar days, a lot more hands-on stuff. You have to do um, evacuations and things like that. Um, Non-rev traveling. So, so far I have been to Fort Hood, Texas. Um, and to get there, I flew from Philly to Houston and then from Houston to Austin. And then I had to get a rental and drive to my cousin's house. Um, that was on the way there. On the way back, I went from Austin to Houston and then from Houston to Detroit because that's when I went to check out my crash pad. So for those of you who did not get the memo, I did find a crash pad in Detroit, which is where I'll be based. Um, really cute, really snuggly. I will have to take my car to Detroit because, um, even though the crash pad is 15 minutes away from the airport, Lyft and Uber doesn't go there. Not to mention that I think driving my own car would be cheaper than Lyft and Uber. So there's that. Um, and then from Detroit to Philly, I went through Dallas, Fort Worth. So a lot of people who fly would rather have straight flights. For me, I'd rather do connecting flights because being on more than one plane in a day will give you an idea of how it's going to be when you start flying. So that's just a tip. Um, now, if you're on like a time schedule or something like that and you can't do the connecting flights, then of course, try to get a straight flight. But um, if you're not revving for fun and you're not really on a schedule, try connecting flights because it will give you an idea of how it feels to be up and down multiple times during the course of a day. So that was the first time um, not revving for me. And then there's someone I became cool with that was in two classes after me and she was looking for a crash pad. She was based in Denver and I told her that I would fly in and you know, be there for moral support, go with her to check out the crash pads. So I flew from Philly to Dallas and oh, I think, and then Chicago to Denver. But when she got to Chicago, her flight was full. Okay, so they downgraded the aircraft in Chicago and started giving out vouchers. So she was like, I'm probably not getting on this flight. So she went from Chicago to Minneapolis and then Minneapolis to Denver. So we met up in Denver probably like around 2 p.m. Um, we took the train to Union Station. The crash pad she was supposed to check out wound up being given to somebody else. So we went to Union Station, we got something to eat, and then we got back on the train. Um, from... Detroit, I took a straight flight from Detroit to Philly. Um, she had a connecting flight to Charlotte, and I forget where, but I think she got on both of her flights. She actually made it back to Charlotte before I made it back to Philly. So that was that. 
I am flying to Hawaii tomorrow. Nine rev. So I'm supposed to be going from Philly to Los Angeles and then Los Angeles to Hawaii. So I'm going to tell you guys about that experience on my next video. A few fit, a few fit, a few tips on non revving. So depending on the airline that you have your flight benefits with, um, I can fly a couple of different airlines as non rev. So there's a app called Staff Traveler. Comes in handy. So how Staff Traveler works is you put the city that you're leaving from and the city that you're going to and the dates that you're leaving and it shows you all of the flights from every airline. So it gives you an idea of where you can go and if you don't make a certain connection what are your other options. So it definitely comes in handy. Um... For my people in training, I don't think that you will be able to book any non-rev flights until after graduation. Um, same goes for like your people that you have on your benefits. Um, so your children, your significant other, your friends, whatever. They can't use your benefits until after graduation. Um, let's talk about IOE. So, I received my email with my IOE information on the 29th of September. I graduated. So, let's go from graduation. I graduated August 20th. Um, the 29th of September is when I got my... All right. So, wait. Let's start over. I graduated August 20th. I received my base assignment September 6th. Yes, September 6th or 7th, somewhere around there. I received my EO with my IOE date on September 29th, but I don't actually go on IOE until October 26th. So, if you guys are looking for a timeline, now let me tell you that that is my timeline. Everybody does not have the same timeline. Um, I received my IOE, so did people from class 23, 24, and 25 started to get IOE at the same time. Not everybody, because right now they're not going in any kind of specific order. It's really like, yeah. I mean, it's probably a order, but we just don't know what the order is or how they're determining who gets IOE when. But by the time I actually go on IOE, it would have been two months and six days. So, two months in a week um, that I waited to go on IOE. A lot of people don't like that. I'm not too worried about it because I'm currently still working. So, there's that. But some people are not working and have been waiting for IOE to start working. I would advise, like I said in a video that I posted on my social media, take a leave to do training if you can. If your job allows you to do leave, take a leave. Do not resign. If you do have to resign, find a part-time job or something after training to hold you over until you start flying. Um... But yeah, that's it for this video. I'm trying to think, am I forgetting anything? I don't think I am. Um, if you guys have any questions, hit me up. Um, only if I didn't like, only if it's something I didn't go over in my videos. Um, if I went over in my videos, I'm probably just going to send you a link and tell you to watch the video. All right, bye.